Will I ever get married? Should we move in together? How can I focus on God while dating? Why do I feel so alone? Are looks really that important? Is sex really such a big deal? You may have a lot of questions about your walk with God. So let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to another Lamore in Christ video. I'm Kaitia Lamore and this day we'll be talking about does everything happen for a reason? A lot of people, Christians, non-Christians, will say everything happens for a reason, whether it's our lives were preordained and predestined, so everything we go through was meant to happen because God knows everything and He controls everything. And some people who aren't believers will say, oh, it's fate, it's destiny, karma, it's all of these things where it's basically out of control and it's wild. And I feel like that can cause a lot of fear and anxiety. Well, it did for me because I'm the type of person where I want to know what I'm supposed to do in order to follow authority, especially God. If everything is so arbitrary, where is the rules, you know? What are the parameters of life? I can't really go along with everything happens for a reason because there are some terrible things that happen and we can't really say that was happening for a reason and then just try to make good out of it just to make you feel better and I think some people do that because it really is hard to imagine you know horrible things going on and you're like I guess this was to teach me a lesson I guess this was so I would not take life for granted I guess this is so I would really treasure relationships I guess this is just life and I'm, I'm not down with that so I wanted to go into three I'm sure there's more categories but the three categories I wanted to talk about were things happening for a reason, whether it's because we live in a sin-filled world, whether it's because of consequences for good or for bad, or it could be because of your obedience and because you being in line with God's will. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is my first time meeting my husband basically. This was a time in my walk with God when I was 22 or about to turn 22. I was so close to God. I had a great small group. I went to a wonderful church. I was constantly being fed. I was constantly like, God, what do you want me to do? That's even when I started writing and blogging for the first time, which led me pretty much to YouTube and what I'm doing now. So I think it's really great how God works and redeems the time when you kind of get off track a little bit. So about the obedience, I was going to some art shows with friends and I was really getting into videography and filming because I went to school for television production. And I talk more about this in my video about when God changes your dreams, how I even ended up in school for television production. So I'm going to this school, my friend invites me to art shows, I go to these art shows and I'm like, these people are so cool. Like, these are my type of people. I wanna know, how do I get in? How do I get to be a part of it? I don't just wanna attend these shows, I wanna be a part of them. So I started doing more photography. I would film the shows and put them on YouTube YouTube and do like a recap video and as I was doing this the founder of the art group who would put on these shows he was like we're going to California we're gonna do a West Coast tour and we need somebody to film it because we want to make a documentary spoiler alert that documentary didn't end up happening for a multitude of reasons but me going on this trip with them to California I felt like I needed to go but I didn't know why and it even ended up turning out that I had a free airline ticket because my stepdad was in the Navy. So I think once a year we all had a free ticket to go somewhere because they expect that you're usually stationed somewhere that you're not from. So you want to see family, you want to check in. So it's every year, every few years, each of us, all of the dependents would get a free ticket. So I'm like, I have a free ticket. I don't have to save up money to go. I need to tell my job, you know, if I'm going and I need to make sure I have money so I'm not broke when I go. But all signs pointed to yes, and I was like, this seems like it just felt like a thing I needed to do, but I was still like, this is a lot. Like, I've hardly ever just been on a trip by myself away from my parents. That was just my lifestyle. Like, I just didn't go on a lot of sleepovers or go out of town or something. It would always just not end up happening. <laughs> Some plans would just fall through or I would just wouldn't feel comfortable with the group of people. So anyways, I'm like, I'm flying across the ocean from Hawaii to California with these people. I know them, but I don't like know them, know them. And most of them were, were Christians. So that helped, but I, it wasn't like we grew up together and I've known you for a long time. I think I had known them for maybe a year at this point, maybe less. 
I don't remember. But I had known them for a little while, long enough to be comfortable going, and they were like, we're gonna get a rental house, we're gonna have activities, like basically this is how much you would owe. And they were really organized, which was like awesome, especially with like 20 something year olds. I don't know if you planned with people in that age group, but usually it's kind of a hot mess. So these people were like, business, let's do this, let's get it done. So they got everything taken care of with the finances and we did fundraisers so that we could not have to spend so much out of pocket. So I go get on the plane, I sleep the whole ride, and then we land in California in Los Angeles at LAX Airport, one of the biggest airports in the world. So we land at LAX and after I'm waking up out of my nap, because it was like a five and a half hour flight, I just remember landing. Looking out the window, it was nighttime and I just saw the LA lights and something in my spirit, I believe it was God telling me, this is your home. And I was like, I ain't never been to this city in my life. I've only seen it, you know, on TV. I've never been to Los Angeles. I hardly ever came to the mainland except for going to Florida to see my dad. So this is interesting that something's telling me this is home so I kind of put it in the back of my head because I'm like that's a pretty big deal. Turns out one of the people who went on the trip knew my husband. They had met already, they were kind of good friends. One of those friends was like I don't see you a lot but we're close, like we're cool. So she invited him out the first night to dinner and she was like does anybody want to go? I'm going to Denny's with my friends and I was like I have the biggest headache, I need to like sleep. So I didn't see him, but she ended up, she went to Denny's with Jarrell, my husband, and his friend. So they went out and then they came back and I kind of remember in passing meeting Jarrell and he was trading artwork with her because they're both artists and they do amazing paintings. So they're like trading artwork now just like, I'm not thinking anything of it. So then a few other events happen where he keeps coming to the art show, we start painting at the walls in Venice Beach, we have a Disneyland trip, and that was kind of the time where it was less about business and more about fun. That was one of the last things we did was going to Disneyland and I just remember him kind of flirting with me and I was like, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know you, bro. Like, don't come at me, bro. So I was like, what is he doing? Like, he's always next to me. He always try to find something to talk about. But I was like, I would never do long distance relationship, like ever. Like, why would I do that? Why would anybody do that? That's not how I'm gonna meet my husband. I wasn't really sure about this whole LA is your home thing yet. So we're hanging out and I was just kind of like, this guy is really cool though, like I would keep in touch. So I go back to Hawaii, which people call paradise. I feel so homesick for LA, it's not even funny. I remember talking to my friends and they were like, how was your trip? Are you glad to be back? Like I didn't know what to say, but I was just kind of like, I miss LA. Like. I don't want to be here. I don't know if I said that out loud, but I was just kind of like, I don't want to be here anymore. And I was like, hi, God, how am I supposed to get to LA? You told me that was my home. I believe that was your voice because this feeling makes no sense. I've been to different places and I've never been homesick for a place that I have never really spent time in other than what we were there for two weeks. So I was just like, okay, what does this mean? And then I just start drawing closer to God and I'm like, you're gonna help me to get there. Is there a friend here? We're gonna be roommates in LA, what is the deal? And then over time, long story short, Jarrell keeps pursuing me over the internet. Uh, emails, texts, phone calls, MySpace, like it was a lot of talking. And so by the time he comes to visit Hawaii, that was about nine months, seven to nine months after we first met. And he was like, let's hang out. And I was just like, okay, let's get a group to hang out maybe. Cause I don't really know you like that. So I was just debating cause my friends wouldn't answer my phone calls and my texts. And I was like, we're supposed to be hanging out together. So they had already hung out with him without me. And that's a whole nother issue about how those friends kind of <laughs> ended up disappearing out of my life. So they didn't want to hang out with me and him. So I was just like, hey, um, do you still want to hang out? And he was like, yeah, we could do like grab food or something. And I was just like, oh, like how do I cancel? And I was like, just go, just go. Like you can do this, be outside, make sure people can see you. Cause I was just like, give no appearance of evil. I don't want anybody thinking I'm dating someone. You know, it was just a lot. Cause I was like, I'm single, I'm secure. I'm walking with God, we got this. Like I'm not trying to be in temptation and all this stuff. So we ended up meeting up and we had burgers, which is still one of my favorite things to eat. Um, so we had burgers and we just had time to talk for hours. And I was like, wow, um, I think you're a thing. I 
think in my head, like I'm speaking to him, like, I think you're a thing. Like, I think this is a thing. I didn't see this coming. I thought we'd just be friends. And then I ended up telling his, um, our mutual friend again, because when he stayed in Hawaii, he stayed at her place. I ended up telling her like, okay, I can take him to the airport just so we can talk, you know, more and spend time together. So I think he picked up his suitcase from her house and then I took him to the airport. And after he left, I was just like, whoa what was that? Is this, is this it? Like, is this my husband? So I already talked about how I knew my husband was the one. That's another video you can search on my channel. And it basically talks about through the time of me seeing him in Hawaii to when we were officially boyfriend and girlfriend because God had told us we were going to get married. We ended up getting married. I moved to LA and I was like, who knew this is why this was home and this is how I would get here. So this thing happening for a reason, the reason was I followed the voice of the Lord. I did what he told me to do. I was in a very intimate place with him where he could provide me with the right instructions so that I could follow his will and be where I needed to be over oceans and land, you know, coming from Hawaii to LA and that kind of story. People will say, it's serendipity, it's fate, it was your destiny, it was bound to happen, your soulmates and all of this. And I just feel like that was God's plan for me. And because I obeyed, it happened. I could have been like, I don't want to get on that plane. I don't really know these people. Maybe next time. And I guess God could have rerouted, you know, my path to get there. But I know several people that because they were forcing different things in their life to happen and had been dating people they weren't supposed to or didn't do what God told them to do, they ended up missing out on several years of being with the person that they were supposed to be with. And that's a whole nother topic about is there the one, is there your soulmate? Like that's something we can talk about later. But as far as God pairing me with my husband, I knew this was the guy for me. And so I feel like I could have eventually looped around back to meeting him, but it happened so quickly because I was in the right place. There was no other opportunities where this could have happened earlier than that just literally none because even the mutual friend my husband has even if he came to Hawaii to see her before I wasn't really close with her I didn't really talk to her like that she wouldn't have been like hey hey shouty come over like I got somebody who you might like it wouldn't have happened this was the earliest point that I could have met him and I was just 23 years old when we got married so that's one of the everything happens for a reason kind of examples where the reason was I obeyed God so another thing is everything happening for a reason the reason may be consequences for good or for bad actually like consequences where you're like oh you did what you're supposed to so you got promoted or whatever but for me this everything happening for a reason was because i did not listen to god's voice so shortly after i came to la and i was like yeah I'm married this is great there were specific people in my husband's life and groups that he was a part of that i knew upon first meeting them, this person shouldn't be around and we shouldn't be involved in this activity. But I didn't want to be one of those people who you marry someone and then you're like, I'm turning your whole life upside down because you're going to be conforming to what I want. Like all of these things, ugh, like get it away. I want you to be like this. And I was like, I don't want to be that person. And then people are going to be like, you're so whipped. She's got you on a ball and chain, like all this stuff. I just wanted to be like, okay, I'm going to take my time and try to figure out how do we get out of this. But when you do that, sometimes you get so comfortable with that reality, it becomes normal to you. So the enemy will use things like, you just think you're so good. You just think you're so holy. Did God really say that? Look at all these good things that are happening. And sometimes good things will happen in the midst of disobedience, like, cause good things will just happen. Like, oh, I got paid well, or oh, this opportunity came, or this other friend came in the meantime. But if you're not supposed to be in that group, in the, at that job, with those friends, you will see over time how toxic it becomes. And that's how I kind of ended up surrounding myself with toxic people and becoming a people pleaser, not wanting people to look at me a certain way and be like, oh, we don't like her because she's too this, she's too that. But it, I mean, it lasted for years and years and years and, and so much stress so much anxiety, so much of just being exhausted with these people and these groups and, and different things that we were a part of. And the great thing about it, looking back with my husband, when we first got married and when we were dating, he was very open and receptive to like, hey, what about this suggestion? What if we change this? And he was like, well, let's see. Let's try it and let's see. Let's change it up. 
but I think once we got so rooted in our new life because I didn't want to rock the boat, it became like when I would bring up something, it's so out of the blue. And it's like, hey, it's been fine this long. Like, what are you talking about? And nobody agrees with me. So I just look kind of crazy. And if I had used that open window that God had when my heart, when my husband's heart was softened to hearing what I had to say and we're, you know, we're still navigating communication and all of that, but it would have been fine. It would have worked out. It would have been okay. God would have given me the words to say and he would have revealed certain things or we would have listened and paid attention to certain red flags before it was too late and before there needed to be like 10 red flags for us to let go of certain relationships and activities. So that kind of thing, you know, people being in your life that are pulling you down or, or destructive and just toxic relationships and stuff, for me, it happened for a reason. And it wasn't because God had to, you know, teach me this. I had to learn thick skin. I had to learn this. No, it was because I didn't obey the voice of the Lord. That was the reason. I felt very unsure. I was beginning to doubt. My faith was a little shaken. And so the enemy exploited that and took advantage of that. So there may be areas in your life similar to like you follow the voice of the Lord. He took you boom, boom, boom. And people are like, oh, fate. Oh, serendipity. It's like, no, Jesus did that. I don't want to take credit for anything that Jesus did. And again, with consequences, you may be having people say, oh, you had this terrible abusive relationship because it was supposed to teach you something something came from it oh this person treats you like garbage because you're supposed to learn this you know if god tells you to do something and it's a difficult situation that will happen but if you are deciding to run your life a certain way and then all of these negative things start coming that are breaking you down and you hardly have the strength to deal with it i don't think that is of the lord so that thing happening for a reason like i said is the reason of your setting your own path you're doing things your own way and there's going to be consequences for good or for bad so the third thing i will talk about is things happening for a reason that it is a sin filled world ever since the fall of adam and eve i know there's some people who are like wait till we get to heaven we gonna have a talk with adam and eve like everybody <laughs> they're gonna need to be in quarantine because nobody likes them and i'm sure we're not even gonna be thinking about all that when the day comes but with adam and eve having their fall it brought so much sin and curses into this world that we now face. There's kids being kidnapped, there's people being murdered, there's people dying very young, there's just things in the world that happen. There's famine, there's wars, there's a lot of stuff that are happening for a reason. The reason is the enemy will use anybody he can to destroy everyone and everything. The enemy comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. That is his tactic. And God only comes to bring good things and to bring life. After I had my miscarriage, and I have a video about this too. Fortunately, I have a video basically about all of these. I suffered a miscarriage about six months before I conceived my daughter, Petra, who is now almost four. So it's been a while. I've healed from it, God is good. The thing I wanted to tell you is when I did have a miscarriage and I made it public because I wanted to be able to talk to people about it if they ever went through it later because a lot of people didn't talk about it and that's how I didn't know. Even my own family members, some of them had a miscarriage and I'm finding out after I have mine, I never would have known. So I wanted to put myself out there so that people could talk to me about that. And people have, they've been like, oh, my friend dealt with this, can you talk to her? Oh, I've dealt with this, can you talk to me? It's been a blessing to comfort those with the same comfort I received from God. So after I made it public, friends, family, strangers, a lot of them commented, oh, everything happens for a reason. God has his plans. We don't always understand them, but that was his plan. When you're least, you know, expecting it, you'll get pregnant like maybe the timing wasn't right and I was like my baby died and you're trying to tell me God planned that he wanted that for my baby to die I cannot agree with that <laughs> in any percent I can't because that to me is very scary like I said if everything is so arbitrary or if God is just doing things recklessly <laughs> then how do I know what to do? What tools do I have to get through this life? I'm gonna be paranoid because I'm gonna think anything can happen at any time. I'm not gonna be thinking, oh, this is so comforting to me. That was God's plan, Meryl. No, I'm not gonna be thinking that. <laughs> I'm thinking, why would God do this to me? So the main thing that helped me out was knowing the truth that we live in a sin 
filled world. With the fall of man, a lot of curses came. And that doesn't mean that if you have a miscarriage, your faith isn't strong. If somebody near to you dies, you didn't pray hard enough. If something happens to you, you get in a car accident or your life changed, or you lose a leg, you can't be thinking this was God's plan for me so that I could do A, B, and C. We live in a sin-filled world. Horrible things happen to bad people, to good people, and God's comfort is the thing that will get us through. The Word says, in this life you will have many trials. And it goes on to say, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So he promises, because the way this world is, we're gonna have trials, we're gonna have tribulations, and it's uncomfortable, well, it's more than uncomfortable, it's dreadful that that's a fact, but God is still good, and he will give us the peace, he will comfort us, he will bring us the good news, he will help us to heal through this, because a lot of people have traumatic past as well, and people will say, you had an abusive relationship, oh, your daddy beat you, oh, you got molested, oh, you got raped, everything happens for a reason, really like that's horrible so with these things happening it's like you can go through some stuff and god will bring you through it god will heal you from it as if it never even happened to you like you'll know that it happened to you but day in and day out you won't be thinking oh man i woke up today and all i can think about is this horrible thing like god if you rely on him he will seriously help you through that so that's something i wanted to say because um, I think sometimes people are meaning well, but they give very horrible and hurtful advice because they're trying to kind of make sense of it or make it be this beautiful, magical thing. You can make good of those things, like everything will work out for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to His purpose, but it doesn't mean that God put you through that. It doesn't mean that He's torturing you, because that's torture. If God is just like, I need you to be humble, so I'm going to kill your baby, I'm going to kill your daddy, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. No, things just happen, because that's the world we live in, a world of death and decay and destruction, but God is good. He is faithful. I know people who years and years and years after having a miscarriage, they literally can't seem to get through it or get past it like they're tormented every day by that and I thank God that that's not my story because I was able to rely on him and even to have faith through another pregnancy that my baby was going to be healthy and alive and she's going to be thriving and even if something did happen God is going to help me through it God is going to help me through it so that was my faith walk and those were the three examples I had I hope that you could relate to them and that they brought you comfort in some way because I don't want any of you just thinking that life is so arbitrary and that you can just live your life any old type of way because that's just the way it was supposed to be or like nothing you can do would ever help anybody and there's no purpose for you there is a purpose for you and I wanted to pray for you about these things because um, the lie is real the lie is real the struggle is real the lie is real <laughs> that the enemy has for us to turn our minds in the wrong direction and have us have the wrong view of our God. So let's pray about that right now. Lord, I thank you for being with us right now, that you comfort those who seek you, that you are with those who want to know you more. Thank you, God, that you are a God of love and mercy and grace. You are a God of healing, restoration, and redemption. And I pray against the lies that the enemy has, that everything happens for a reason. In the sense that you have no control, it's going to happen regardless, you deserve it, this is life, you can't do anything about it. That is a very scary reality to live in. But God, you give us strength, you give us peace, you give us joy, you give us a plan, and there is the best plan for our lives and there's our plan for our lives and I pray that those who are watching that their plan is surrendered to you so that it becomes your plan for their life because you have an amazing plan for them and what you began in them the good work you began in them you are faithful to complete it and I thank you for the purpose that you have for them that you did knit them together in their mother's womb you knew you know all of their days from the moment they're conceived and that doesn't mean that you're putting through them through horrible things, that you're just arbitrarily up there giving punishment to those that love you. It means that you know you need to comfort them, that you need to be with us, that you need to give us the truth so that we have something to stand on when the enemy comes and tells us we have nothing. 
So I pray for all these people who are hurting, who are trying to find a reason and an answer to why they're going through things. Please help them to have the life that you purpose for them, Lord God, that they will not be veering from the left to the left and to the right, but that they will stay on that path and that your voice will be clear so that they know it's you that they're following, Lord God. Help them to be in their Bibles, to be surrounded by community that is building them up, that they will hear the Holy Spirit clearly and that they will trust in you, Lord. And I pray all of this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for talking with me today, for having this conversation about does everything happen for a reason, and I wanted to know what you guys thought about it. Leave some comments, some encouraging feedback for people who are dealing and struggling with this, and even if you have questions, leave them below. I can answer them, or maybe someone else has a better word for you. But anyways, thank you for watching, and if you want to become a part of the family, hit that subscribe button. If you want to know when I upload, tap on that notification bell, and I will be able to see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Where are my glasses? And I talk more about this when in my video called When God Trained Chain. Blah. So the other thing I'll talk about is, ah, my legs. Lamore in Christ now has apparel. Please check the description box for more information on how to purchase. If you like what you see here, please subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out our previous uploads. See you next time.